Hey everyone, this is Dr. Gilmet, and today I want to do a video about box blocks and outliers, but this is a new one with Excel. All right, so we're going to work with a box plot, which is sometimes called a box and whisker plot, and I'm going to show you how to calculate outliers. All right, so I'm going to actually show you two ways to do this in Excel, um, and I'm going to show you how to work with Excel to create the plot and calculate the outliers. Okay, so the first question is, what is a box plot, right? So a box plot is basically a visual representation of the five number summary. Okay, so what's the five number summary? Well, the five numbers in the five number summary are the minimum, quartile one, the median, quartile three, and the maximum value. So there's five numbers there. These values divide the data into quarters. Basically, 25% of the data is in each section or quartile of the data, all right? But even more important, you can see the center and spread of the data at a glance. This is probably my favorite aspect of the um, box plot, and I'm going to show you that here uh, when we get to the plot, okay? So the range is represented by the minimum to the maximum, so the full length of the box plot gives you the range. The interquartile range, which is a measure of spread, much like the standard deviation, it's represented from Q1 to Q3. That's the box portion. And of course, it tells you what the center is with the median. So you get the full range of values, that interquartile typical spread, and the center of the value all in one shot. Okay, so <clears throat> how can I obtain this five number summary? So there are two ways of actually doing it. The, um, the first way of doing this is basically with built-in Excel functions, right? You can actually use quartile inclusive. Um, there's also a quartile exclusive that I'll show you to find all five of the numbers and you just simply want to go in order. So let's, let us actually go over to Excel to see what I mean. Okay, so here we go. We're in Excel. We're starting with some normally distributed data. Um, I didn't do anything fancy today. If, if you've watched my videos for a while, you know, I typically like to put Arrowverse on videos in, but I didn't do that this time. So basically I just randomly created this data. I've got these values down here that go down to 27. All right, so um, that's that. And so how do I create the five number summary? Well, if you'll remember, you've got the minimum value here. And what you want to do is, actually there's a minimum function in Excel, right? And so the minimum function in Excel just requires the numbers. So I go over here and I grab each of these numbers and I scroll down and I just grab them, right? I close the set of parentheses so that you can see that, right? They close the set of parentheses right there and I just hit enter and I've got 2.2. That's the minimum value in here. Now, um, we could verify that by sorting this data, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, this is going from A3 to A27. Right, so what can I do now? Well now for quartile one, I just start typing quartile and there's the exclusive and there's the inclusive. Let's go ahead and use the inclusive. And again, it wants an array and a quartile, right? So the array of data is over here. I actually know it goes from A A3 to A27. So I'm gonna type it instead of scrolling through it. And once I do that, you can actually see with the inclusive, there's the minimum value, first quartile, median, third quartile, maximum value, right? So I want the first quartile. I can just cl double click on it. There's the first quartile. I close out the parentheses, hit enter, and there it is, 2.9. <clears throat> Great. So I can continue to do this. I can actually use the median function, right? And again, that's going to go from A3 to A27. And there's three for Q3, right? I can do the quartile function again, the inclusive one. The array again is going to go from A3 to A27. Oh, and I need to tell it that I want the third quartile now. <clears throat> and then, of course, for the maximum, right, uh, you can actually use the max function. And you've got the numbers again are going to be from A3 to A, 
a 20 set. Okay, and that'll give you your maximum value of four there. So there's our, our values um, in our five number summary. Now you saw with the inclusive <clears throat> that what we could do is uh, change this around just a little bit and use a formula, right? I could actually use zero, one, two, three, four, like this, right? And so over here, I can do or dial inclusive. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this data right here, just pretending like I don't know what the data range is, comma. And you could actually now, instead of doing these values, I can reference this over here. So this zero is going to get put in right here. And then the one, the two, the three, and the four. And this will give me all of my values. Now, if you do this, you want to be really careful. All right? Because what you want to do now is you want to make sure that this array gets locked in place. To do that, you need the um, dollar signs in front of the column letter and the cell number. And so you're going to put each one of those, and that's going to lock this into place. Now, when I copy and paste this down, you get exactly the same thing. And that's beautiful. All right. So um, that is two ways of doing it using the built-in functions. Now, you can also do this with the data analysis tool pack. Now, I'm going to admit, not, oops, not the, uh, the best way to do this. Using the descriptive statistics option in the tool pack does give you most of the five number summary, doesn't give you the quartiles, right? So depending on if you have the tool pack, I have a video showing you how to install it, okay? Um, or you need the information for it, it is a great option, all right? Um, depending on what you need the information for. If you're, if you're using it for like a homework problem or something, you probably, you know, it's probably fine, okay? So let me show you how to do that in Excel. So I'm going to go back over to Excel. Oops, sorry. Under data, under the data tool, you got data analysis over here. When you click on it, descriptive statistics, I hit OK. The input range is the A2 um, to A27, and the labels are clicked. I have included the labels, so I need to click the labels. This is a real error I see students make. Um, so just be careful of that. The output range, I'm going to put right over here. And I just want the summary statistics. So once I have these things, and you'll notice the dollar signs lock everything in place. I'm going to click on OK. And there is my data right there. So here's the mean, the standard error. Here's your median. And look, it matches right here. Um, here is your minimum. It matches right there. There's your maximum, and it matches right there. Now, you do not have Q1 and Q3. That's probably the big drawback to this. But you do have three of the five numbers in the um, statistics tool. This says data. Okay, This is really important. If you have only selected numbers, and you have the label option clicked, this first number right here will show up. And that's your dead giveaway that you did something wrong, okay? That'll throw your homework problem off just a little tiny bit, and you will be upset because you'll feel you've done everything right, and then you still get a uh, wrong answer. Okay, so I've showed you how to do that. Now, what is an outlier? The box plot allows you to, um, the five-number summary allows you to actually easily calculate a five-number summary. Uh, five-number summary allows you to easily calculate an outlier. We have an accepted definition. So for quantitative data of a single variable, this accepted definition, a value is extreme or an outlier if the value of your data is less than Q1 minus 1.5 the IQR. Okay. Now I'm going to explain that down here. Or the value is greater than Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. I really like the setup of these two formulas because there's a consistent pattern and mathematics is the study of patterns. Okay, now I do have a little example here, but I actually want to show you how to do this in Excel, right? How do you do this in Excel? Let's go back and see. Okay, so now here with the outliers, right? 
basically what I need is the median and the uh, the Q, the quartiles, and the IQR, right? So <clears throat> if I need Q1, right? So Q1 is going to be this 2.9. So I got 2.9 in there. The IQR is literally Q3 minus Q1. So I'm actually going to have Q3 minus Q1. So it's really this small guy right here, uh, 0.5, which is great. So the lower limit is going to be Q1, the 2.9, minus 1.5 times the 0.5 IQR. Okay, so Q, uh, Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. So anything smaller than 2.15 is going to be um, the lower limit. For the upper limit, what I actually need is Q3. And so Q3 I see is 3.4. The IQR is still the 1.5, no, 0.5, sorry. And so what I'm going to have is the 3.4 plus 1.5 times the 0.5 right here. Okay, so again, Q3 plus the 1.5 times 0.5. So when we look back at our formula, the Q3 and the IQR change depending on our data. The 1.5 is a ruler that never changes, okay? So that's really important. So if I had something smaller than 2.15 or if I had something greater than 4.15, those would be, um, these are the fences, the lower fence and the upper fence, and any values that were beyond them would be outliers. All right, so now, one last thing. Uh, why this definition? Well, basically because it worked. It's as good as anything else. Okay. Um, the IQR is the typical spread of the data. You've cut out those extreme values. Okay. Of the min and the max. And you have that middle 50%. And so what you're saying is that's the typical spread of data. So if you take that typical spread of data and you multiply it by 1.5, right? and you go beyond that in one direction, then it seems like that would be an extreme value. And this is just one of those things that the accepted definition. All right, finally, what is the best way to get the box plot? I am really glad you asked. The best way is to use technology and just create the plot. Now recently, Excel actually added the box plot to its normal graphs. Thus, you do not actually have to modify a bar graph into a box plot. Previous to this, that's actually what you had to do. So now let's look and see how easy it is to do this in Excel now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab all of this data right here. And I grab it first. And I'm going to insert a recommended chart. Under this tab, you've got all charts. And what you can do is down here, you've got box and whisker plot. And when you click on it, you'll have one option. And you're going to click on OK. And there it is. Um, I'm going to actually move this over here to, so that you can see, All right? And now we're going to make it a little smaller. Okay, perfect. Perfect. All right, so here's our five number summary, 2.2. .2. You can see that that's where this ends up. Is it 2.2? .2? The mean is at, the median is at three. You can see it's right at three. This Q3 is at 3.4. Right there, just below 3.5, we've got the edge of the box. And here is the four, the maximum value. So the min to the max are the whiskers. The IQR is from Q1 to Q3. That's the box. And then the center is that median. Now, Excel actually puts in a little X there so that you can see where the mean is in relation to the median. Um, but that's not typically part of a box plot. Now, remember how I told you if you were less than two or you were greater than four over here, you would have an outlier. Watch what happens. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to take a median value and I'm going to make it six. Okay. When I click on it, notice what happens. I've got this dot up here. Okay. And that dot is an outlier in the data. It's past the whiskers. And so we know that the upper limit is at 4.15. So right here is the fence 
for an outlier, and anything past that is going to be an outlier. Now, instead, if six, what if I made it one? Now, what you can see is you know that anything lower than 2.15, there's like a little fence right here at 2.15, and anything lower than that is going to be an outlier. So there is the dot right there that represents the outlier or the extreme value. So Excel actually calculates that there are outliers for you in its box uh, plot. Okay, so I hope you understand this type of plot better and the five number summary. If you do, that makes me happy. Until next time, please like, subscribe, and hit that notifications bell.